Well, hello there. I'm Dr. Albert Chong, and welcome to Your Friendly Proctologist. Thank you so much, and I appreciate you being here. Welcome to this community where we talk about our bottom ends, freely discuss our issues, and build support for one another. And I want to introduce for 2023, I've kind of hinted at this in other videos, but we have a new sponsor joining us. And that is this guy right here. It's called Revival XR. Let me get it closer to the camera for you. This is a sits bath. Um, my fingers are blocking it. This is a product for use in your sits bath tub time. Okay. I'm a big fan of sits baths. I'm not a fan of those sits bath plastic hats that you put on the toilet, but the sits baths can be extremely helpful for relaxation, for healing, for healing wounds, calming down inflammation. And these guys have got it right, the ingredients, and they've done it right. They've done the proper research, and this has already been on Amazon in the marketplace for a long time already. In fact, there's already a lot of reviews for you to look at on Amazon. I've got a link in the description box below. But this has so many ingredients to heal all your hemorrhoid issues and comfort them. And you have anal fissure issues, this can work for that. Anal itching, even anal infections, this can help clean those things out and soothe the skin there. Just to read a few, okay? I'm gonna be talking about this product more and more and we're gonna learn more about this. But I have used this personally and found this to be very helpful and therefore it is they are working with us. We're working together. Again, with all my sponsors, I speak with the owners. I am one mano y mano, and I find out what they're about. No mask, no hiding behind some huge corporation. I need to know who they are and make sure they're out to make sure that we do better, okay? Even including myself, because I use this stuff, okay? So going back to the ingredients, we're talking about Epsom salt, horse chestnut, witch hazel, coconut oil, aloe vera, lavender oil, organic tea tree oil. Okay, you get the idea of where they're going with this. Completely natural organic substances. And it is available on Amazon for you to get. And for goodness sakes, try this out because I definitely have enjoyed this very much in my sits bath. We're going to talk about this a little more at the end of the video on how to use it. Uh, and I've got a little funny story with it waiting for you. Okay, so Revival XR, check out the description down below. Today's video, I want to talk to you about thrombosed external hemorrhoids. Oh, I know. You're like thinking, Dr. Chung, you've been on YouTube for like two years. And you're telling me you haven't talked about this topic. No, I haven't devoted a single video to it. But yes, I've referred to it in some videos here and there. But let's talk about what the heck is happening with this. How do you treat it? How is it recognized? What are your options when you go to a surgeon's office? I want you to be prepared with ammo, with questions. so you, Because you know what can happen. You know what you're you know, what can be done to help you. So first, what happens? What is it? Thrombose, external hemorrhage. If you break it apart, the thrombose, the thrombosis is the blood clot. There is a bleeding that happens underneath the skin. The bleeding comes from the hemorrhoid blood vessel. And that is a collection. It's a either a bead, a grape, or a watermelon. And there is blood clots in there. And then external hemorrhoid, because the, these blood clots come from external hemorrhoids, okay? Can you get thrombosis of an internal hemorrhoid? Yes, you absolutely can. Those are absolutely killer as well. But today, we're just going to talk about external thrombosis hemorrhoids, okay? Or blood clot from external hemorrhoid. So... What happens here is that there are many offending factors. There are many different stories. Let's take the most common one. You had a bad, big, hard 
brick of a poop that came out of your bottom end. It scraped up those hemorrhoids on the inside, and as it was coming out, it decided to injure the hemorrhoid blood vessel on the external, the outside. And we know that hemorrhoids are blood vessels. They're just a mess, a huge network full of these blood vessel tubes holding blood in it just constantly circulating so when you bust the wall of a hemorrhoid blood vessel it bleeds out but because it's on the external side where does it bleed out to underneath the skin on the outside of your butt okay how far on the outside well they can be right at your balloon knot like literally as you see the hole caving in to your anus or it can be a little bit more on the outside but either way the way you recognize these things is that you feel a bump on the outside and in the beginning when you first injure it it can be very soft why because the blood hasn't had time to clot yet you know if you were to open up your um let's say you open up a scab and you start bleeding is the blood liquid or is it a solid? It is a liquid at first. It's not only it's not till later that it turns hard. So it's gonna feel a soft bump. But you may notice over time is that the pain is starting to increase. Next, also the size of this grape or this bump may start to increase. And then it starts to get boggy and more swollen and then more painful as time goes on. Okay. So what's happening is that you get the injury of the blood vessel, the blood seeps out, but then the immune system is now coming in to heal this injury. It senses the danger and the problem. Inflammation, as we talked about, it comes in the immune system, is bringing all sorts of chemicals and cells to try and heal things. But at the same time, it's also trying to clot as well because it wants to seal up that hole it's like patchwork you know got plaster on that drywall well it's doing the same thing for the hemorrhoid blood vessel seal it up we don't want it to keep bleeding so the pain then comes in the water then starts to get attracted to that area where the blood clot is and blood clotting is also part of inflammation so that whole area the blood vessel injury plus that blood clot all starts to get swollen red angry painful and it can be mega mega painful okay because it's also on the most sensitive part of your butt the very outside oh super annoying <laughs> isn't it and your brain takes that pain signal and it just is shouting code red code red the pain is immense so after this happens now this is an evolution of time okay so now what do you do is that you're sitting at home you may try some preparation h cream you're gonna buy some stuff you may try some tylenol you may try some ibuprofen at home because you're thinking maybe it'll go away maybe this is the worst of it but at a certain point you're thinking yo I can't take anymore. I can't sit down the pain I can't think I'm so pissed off all the time I can't sleep you go to the doctor's office, you go to the urgent care maybe, and the doctor sees you and says, oh, you know what? You've got a hemorrhoid. Maybe they said, maybe they are really good and they said, you have a thrombose external hemorrhoid, a blood clot in your hemorrhoid, sir or ma'am. And now you want to know, what can you do for me? I really need help. On the internet, you will see the 72, 72 hour rule for the studies have picked an arbitrary number. Okay, it really is arbitrary. It's not like they studied 71.25, 50.65 hours. But they say within 72 hours, three days, if you catch it early enough, you can go in and get it lanced open. Okay, if it's after 72 hours, for some reason, all the internet sources say, you know, sorry, you missed the window. Now you can't get that done. Okay, and a lot of doctors will also quote this as their as their mantra as well. 72 hours is that magic window. Once you pass it, the window shut down. Sorry, see ya. You got to kind of live with it. Go take a sits bath at home. Use Revival XR. Or you've got to just take some pain medication. But no, you want stronger Prescription medicate? No, sir, we're not giving that to you, sir. It's just a hemorrhoid, it, you know, Tylenol, ibuprofen. That's all you get. See you later. Sorry, go see your primary doctor or, you know, sorry, you kind of have to live with it. Super common. That's it. I think that's unacceptable. This has been an evolution in thinking, okay? 
I have frankly sent many patients home using that 72 hour window rule. And if you're one of those people, I truly apologize. I now understand now what you were going through and how stupid of a rule that is. Okay. And I'm sorry to say that. And I've done it, but medicine and as we as human beings, we need to keep learning. And I have now evolved my care to be now this, okay? The 72-hour rule, just forget about it, okay? I look at it. I see a hemorrhoid with a blood clot. If it is bothering the patient and they want something done, I would explain it. They choose their options. They go from there. So what are the options? Number one option is to just leave it alone, okay? These hemorrhoid issues, these blood clots, rarely are they infected. I've never seen one cross my, you know, I hope I never see one infected, but they rarely are infected. The skin is completely covered in, covering it. Um, there's no wounds there, there's no drainage. And so, yes, you can go home, let nature take its course and let this blood clot slowly disappear and let the inflammation and pain slowly disappear with pain medications and what have you. Will it go away completely? It depends. And I'm talking about the, if you're talking about the blood clot, yes, all the blood will eventually get dissolved and eaten up by the body and will go away. But will it be gone? The bump? That is maybe. If it's a real small blood clot, yeah, that one will probably disappear. The skin will flatten out and it'll be as if nothing happened. But if it was a really big watermelon or grape, since that skin was stretched out and it stretched out for a while because blood takes a very long time for the body to reabsorb and break down. So you may have that blood clot for about three to four months, just depending how big it is. And so that skin, it's stretched out and it's going to deflate like a, you know, like a water balloon, but it won't completely flatten out. You may have an external skin tag, right? A little bit of extra skin on the outside of your anus that you may be able to flip back and forth because it took so long, but it is an option. If you don't want any procedures done, you can do things a natural way. What about another option? And this is the, where the procedure comes in, okay? If this is bothering you and you want this blood clot out, that is the best way to release the pressure. Number one, okay, that blood clot and the inflammation of water there creates a tension and pressure there. That's one of the reasons why when you push on it, it hurts so bad. So if you open up the skin, you can get the blood clot to come out. You get the water to keep draining out because we don't stitch up that hole when we release the blood clot, when we cut it open, okay? When we make that incision with our instruments, we want all that water and the blood to keep draining out. This guy is going to continue to flatten out. That inflammation is going to go way faster and you're going to feel better, okay? Now, in terms of the pain, typically the pain that you're in is pretty bad and so you're looking for a procedure, right? But that cutting typically is a bit more mild than the pain of the blood clot itself. Okay, so typically it's a pretty good advantageous exchange. But if your blood clot is not really bothering you that much and it's more like, I hate this blood clot, I don't like the feeling of it, then you may feel more of the cut and you may your pain level may go up a little bit while, until that, that uh, cut heals, right? But for some people, it is just an unsightly, very uncomfortable thing in their mind that says, I don't want that bump there, I want it gone. Doc, can you just release that blood clot so it's, it's as if my butthole didn't ever have one of these? And that's something I do for people, no matter if it's 24 hours, 72 hours, even a week out, I've done it. Yes, I have done that because you know what? Let's be real, people. I'm trying to I'm trying to be human and help you. And if you understand the procedure and you understand the potential complications of me doing a procedure on your bottom end, yes, I will help you. Okay. And so for these people, I will release the blood clot. The skin then doesn't have that chance to be stretched out for so long. Your chances of a skin tag are reduced. Your pain goes away faster. It's a faster recovery than leaving that blood clot in for three to four months. Typically the pain from that initial 
uh, injury is about two to you know two weeks or so it kind of goes up and then down again but with this cut usually it gets better much faster because now everything's draining out things are healing quicker so the other thing I do as well is that if there's a huge one here, okay, sometimes I have to make multiple cuts. Sometimes I have to do some creative stitching because of the, how big it is, okay? Because I can't just cut this whole thing off, but I also want to give a good cosmetic result. And I also want to take care of the pain and blood clot issues. So some of these procedures really need a customized discussion because your blood clot hemorrhoid is not the same as this person's and therefore the consultation is extremely important but in general like I said I don't refuse procedures for this especially if it's causing a lot of pain or a lot of discomfort or a lot of dis you know just it's not sitting with you well okay for whatever that reason is it's a good thing to talk about now what are some questions you want to ask I would ask the doctor you know what kind of procedures can you offer? Can I get this procedure done today? And is this something we can do in the office? Okay, because I think that this is a procedure that can definitely be done in the office setting. And that way you can go home knowing that your healing can be started much earlier. Okay, and sometimes with these blood clots, what also happens is that you may get a hole that develops over the blood clot okay and that happens naturally these blood clots can also eat through the skin kind of burrow their way and then all of a sudden people say oh my god all of a sudden one day i had a bunch of blood just drain out but you know the weird thing is i feel better i'll take a look at them in the office and it's what happened is that the blood clot the external thrombus hemorrhoid happened first then the blood clot starts making their way through the skin and that pressure that usually would have been opened up with my instruments happened naturally and I tell people that this is a very natural process as well you can leave it alone or you can have a procedure done by me and I can assist by taking out more blood clots if there are any in there or I can remove some of the skin if they're, if they're looking for a very flat looking bottom end after everything is healed, right? So there's always different options with whatever situation you have. It's just very important to discuss with the doctor what their plans are, what, are they, what is he or she going to do? And so I think this is a very general overview in external thrombose hemorrhoid. They range from very small to super huge and super heavy and painful. But the best thing to do is to see a specialist, okay? Because I've seen a lot of horror stories that these being drained by other doctors like urgent care or ER. And the numbing is a terrible PTSD causing experience, okay? Um, they don't drain things appropriately, you know, or they, you know, the true matter of the fact is, is that they just send you home and leave you ign feeling ignored and feeling like your problem is not addressed because they say, you know what, no, nope, we can't, can't do anything here. You know, you need to go see somebody else or it's past 72 hours. Sorry, I'm not going to help you. And so definitely ask your questions about this. This is also a big topic as well. And being as common as it is, I'm happy to answer them for you. Okay. And as we close the video, I want to talk to you about how to use Revival XR after you get it ordered from Amazon. They said to put about one to two tablespoons of the hemorrhoid formula this package into the tub uh, the funny story is i want to see what this stuff does and so what did i do i dump about one full cup into the bathtub okay and what i wanted to see is if this fragrance is super annoying or not okay because one thing i can't stand is very powerful fragrances and I'll tell you what, I didn't get that sensitivity with this, even with one full cup in my tub. It's pretty subtle, okay? It's not some powerful potpourri, shampoo, you know, perfume type of event. Very so I'm super happy about that. And I, I know these guys took that into consideration. So we'll give 
more discussion to Revival XR. The link is in the description below. I hope you're doing well dealing wherever you are in the world. And I hope these videos are helping you. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye-bye.